In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at iFlight's new refresh from their F7 budget stack and also their 45 amp BL Heli S ESC. So this is going to be pretty interesting because there are some differences here and we can kind of see how also the PCB layout is on the ESC. You can kind of see the cutouts there uh, inside the PCB where the copper is. And um, yeah, I find it pretty interesting. So with that being said, a word from our sponsor and let's get started. So the sponsor of today's video is Skillshare. And this is really great timing because this will get you your introduction into Python for my upcoming videos where I'll be teaching you how to create your own AI or train your own AI and set up the environments in order to get cracking at it. Now you will need some basic Python in order to get going, creating your reward systems once I start the tutorial. And not only that, the first 1000 signups that use the links below will get a free free premium membership and that will open you to so many other classes you have so many things to go through we have web development applied control systems for engineering speed controllers so many crazy cool things social media stuff photography things that i'm just barely scratching the surface so let's go ahead and start with the f7 here now the f7 looks pretty normal however when you flip it over we get something completely different now obviously we get the green we get a ton of connectors and in the packaging they provide you with every single wire you're going to possibly need which we're going to take a look at in a bit here now let's take a look at some of the features on board or the components on board we see we do have a barometer which is right there which is really nice since a lot of people really want that nowadays we have onboard memory for your black box log on screen display it does not have a 9 volt regulator on this flight controller so that's kind of a shame because there's so much space on here that's not utilized, but yeah, I guess you can't ask for everything here. We also do have MP6000, and again, it's an F722 here. Now, if you want to go the soldering route, and you have soldering pads for just about everything you possibly want. You even have camera control on this. And that's really about it for this flight controller. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the accessories before we move on to the ESC here. So we have a ton of connectors, and I don't want to bore you with these connectors, but you have a connector for just about everything. Even the ESC connector would come just like this so you can kind of route it to whatever you want and I'm guessing it would be this one right here so you can see that's already been broken out for you so you can go ahead and route any type of other ESC if you didn't want to use an iFlight branded one and they also provide you with eight rubber gummies that would actually go into the hole here since this is an M4 and this converts it to an M3 so four millimeter hole to an M3 middle or three millimeter hole here now the ESC um, recently, I've been very hesitant to recommend these iFlight budget ESCs uh, due to noise problems. And the noise could actually touch the flight control and make it do some weird stuff, which has happened to me in a previous video. Now here, the filtration is still somewhat minimal. However, they are trying to combat the issue here. With the, keeping the, the overall base design, obviously, as you can tell, they've extended it slightly here. We have a TVS diode, which will help against high voltage spikes. There's a transient voltage suppression diode here, which is a, a step in the right direction. So that's really nice to see here. And if we flip it over here, I don't know why they went with this two color design. I really don't like it, but I mean, uh, who really cares if I don't like it? But it'll it just as long as it performs, that's the best part of all. Now, another thing that's going to be slightly different now when you are mounting this, it's nice that the capacitor is pre-installed. However, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to want to install the ESC just like this. This is the back side of your quadcopter. This would be the front side, motor one, two, three, and four. But this is going to take a lot more space, like a ton more space, as you can tell, because of this capacitor. And this is also kind of a, a nice step in the right direction. However, but you, you're going to have to make sure your uh, frame could actually accommodate this much um, space in it. You probably want to look for a frame with a double stacking solution. For example, if you also had a video transmitter that's going 30 by 30, you're going to want to probably put that in the back and just in the front, you would have this in the flight controller uh, because yeah, this is pretty high and let's actually get a measurement to know exactly how high this is going to be. So this is roughly going to take 13 millimeters of space. So you want to probably put another two millimeters down here so this is not touching the carbon. Uh, so that's that's about 15 millimeters of space stack height just for the ESC, not even including the, the uh, flight controller just yet. And also the flight controller is going to need a bit more space here because we also do have another capacitor here. Now this is really nice to see all this filtration. However, you're really going to have to think about your build before you actually go ahead and build it. And again, this is still new to the market with this new design. So just keep in mind uh, that we don't know anything about them just yet. Now, if you have used them, let us know down in the comment section your experience, because that's going to be very useful for a lot of people out there. Now, it is a BL Heli SESC, and it's rated up to 45 amp maximum. We do have really nice big FETs. Again, filtration somewhat minimal. However, this right here is a really nice addition, which is a 470 microfarad 35 volt capacitor. Don't know to how good they are 
are, but usually the electrolytic type capacitor is going to be very good, especially for our type of noise here. And again, we also do have that TVS diode, which again is really good. And well, that's really it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If there's nothing else I can say. Everything's linked down below. Let me know what you think down in the comment section, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.